Well, hello, my friends. Another old Italian classic recipe for my grandmother: beef pasciol, a beautifully braised beef stuffed with a prosciutto ham, in a amazing tomato sauce braised slowly to perfection. I want to show you exactly how she used to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're doing it right now together. Okay, friends, well, this recipe has been requested, I don't know how many times, but lots and lots and lots of time. And uh, so I'm going to make it the way my grandmother used to make it, okay? And uh, so you can buy the, the, the top round or the bottom round, whatever pieces you, your grocery store that. In many grocery stores, uh, especially with a, a big Italian uh, uh, clientele, uh, they, they sell to you all Publix. Uh, as it already like that, this is a bottom round pieces, and they're a little thick, so I would pound them a little bit. Uh, or you can buy a, a top round pieces, and uh, and I just want to show you how to clean it. In case they don't have this, uh, you want to be able to cut it yourself. So I was going to start cleaning it, but I said, hey, let me not uh, do it now. Let me wait. Let me do it in front of the camera. So basically, there's some uh, uh, fat and silver skin underneath here. So we're just going to remove it all. We're just gonna go in there and uh, and do it. Not much different than I would do the the skin of a fish. <laughs> yeah, I would just go down there and just remove it. You see, I don't need that silver skin and that extra fat right there. So we might as well just remove it all. And voila, we don't need this. Okay. So now what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a um, a a, uh, a slicer. If you have one of those, it help. If all you have is a chef's knife, it's not going to be as easy because you need a very thin knife. And basically, I just cut, I'm going to cut a scallopini, you know. And if it's a little thick, thick, don't worry, because, you know, depends the knife you have. It, it might be difficult for you to do it uh, like this. But it, it, if you don't have it, uh, it, it, if you don't have one of those knives, like I say, it might be difficult. And if it's a little thick, don't worry about it, okay. So i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them all. I'm going to continue doing this, but I am, uh, right now I want to show you how to pound them correctly. So let me put all this right here, okay? And I want to show you how I use my plastic wrap, okay? So, um, I am going to wet my, uh, my cutting board. i show you this technique that is very simple to use the plastic wrap, friends, okay? And uh, so I, I clean it, and I keep it wet. And you know, this is my sanitized water that I use, and I'm, I'm doing a, uh, a video where I explain the whole, for those of you that are new to the channel, I like to keep it wet, right? And so when you put your plastic wrap, uh, uh, this, is a, this is a commercial uh, dispenser that you can buy online in a restaurant site. I bought it at that, that site called Web Restaurants. You can buy it anyway. It's a, it makes it easier to put the wrap in there. And, uh, and then what you do, you take your, uh, your beef right there like this, okay? And you put another piece on top. You see, the reason why I put the water in it is because it sticks to this right there, right? And then I'm gonna take a, another piece. It makes it really easy. You see, to do it this way, friends. All right, I'm gonna take this out of the way. And then I'm gonna pound it a little bit. I'm, I'm just gonna be gentle. Remember when you, get, when you get a meat pounder, you get two sides, right? You get this guy right there that is called the pyramid, and you get the flat side. All you really need is the flat side. This is uh, only if you get like a roadkill, you know, like a passom, or <laughs> you don't need to use this, okay? And you be gentle, okay? Be gentle, please. Make it thin, okay? Make it thin. You don't need a huge piece of beef, so do it, do it nice and thin. How thin, I'm gonna show you in a minute. I'm not gonna do all of them right now. I'm gonna do them off camera. I just wanna get them ready, right? And after this, well, let me finish this. I really wanna show you the thickness you gotta get, you gotta aim. Okay, friends, I'll show you. It's good to take your aggression if you have any aggression. <laughs> I think it's it. It's important that we do it correctly, friends. All right, now I'm gonna show you. We want it to be thin, 
but we do not want it. We don't want to tear it, so it's very important that we are careful. And I'm going to show you how to tie them correctly. I see so many people, mamma mia, how they tie them. I'm going to show you the right way to do it, okay? So look. All right. So now let's look at the inside. And if we look at the thickness, friends, you see? It's pretty nice. See, it's not too thick. It's not too thin. Okay? This is about the right thickness that you want. Okay? I would say it's uh, two eight of an inch. Two, this is the right thickness right there. All right? So I'm going to continue pounding them all. I'm going to get them all ready to go. And then I'm going to show you how I roll them and what I put inside of it. I'm going to make like a paste with it. It's going to be fantastic. So I'm going to finish to do that. I'm going to clean up it all. And then with the next step, the next step is going to be when we roll them. Okay? I'll be back in a second. Okay, friends. Now that I got my aggression out, <laughs> uh, I got, um, I think, six uh, scallopini of beef. I had a two-pound beef, so uh, two pound was a piece of a uh, uh, bottom round that I got. And uh, all right, so now we're gonna make a. You know, normally, uh, you know, I could see uh, some people what they do. They they put some uh, a prosciutto or salami or sausage and the cheese and the and, and the breadcrumb and then they roll it and it's the mess. I like I, mean, I, I like better when we make a paste of it out of it. So kind of like a pesto, if you will, right? So I'm gonna put some basil in there. I got some beautiful basil. Uh, it smells amazing, okay? It's kind of like a pesto, and, you know, it's not a pesto, pesto. <laughs> not a pesto, pesto. What is it? Is it a pesto or is it not a pesto, Jean-Pierre? It's not. All right. A little bit of uh, uh, garlic, okay? Uh, not too much, just a little bit of garlic. And then we're going to put some olive oil. Now, I happen to have a pesto olive oil. If you don't have a pesto olive oil, you have a garlic olive oil. If you don't have a garlic olive oil, you put a beautiful olive oil. It doesn't matter. And we're going to make a little paste. We're going to make sure the, the garlic... The garlic is very fine, okay? Uh, and, and again, it's a matter of opinion how you do this. You know, do it however you want. It. Do it the way it makes you happy. Food at the end of the day, we make it the way it makes us happy, yeah? And you see the garlic is stuck on the side of the machine. So what do we do? No problem. We go right there, because I don't want the garlic to be big, okay? I want the garlic to be present, but delicate, please. Delicate, please. Uh, here we go. I, I think I don't need all that basil. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this. Uh, you have, I have enough oil. Right here is beautiful. And what we're going to do, we're going to mix everything together. Then we're going to put it in here, friends. Okay. I'm going to put some uh, Pecorino Romano cheese. Very grated, extremely fine. I'll give you the exact measurement. Not that I'm really measuring it. Okay, but we get an idea when I write the recipe. This is not very much uh, pe uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Just a little bit right there. And I got this beautiful breakum, fresh breakum. Now, you don't have to uh, use a for this way. You can use the regular Italian breakum. Okay, this is a breakum. We make it. Uh, it's a fresh breakum. It's got the sun-dried tomato. It's got parsley. It's got the garlic in it. And it's got the Parmigiano Reggiano. Chuck is going to give you a... Um, a link for it, I use it all the time for so many recipe friends, it's fantastic. And I keep it in the freezer. When I need it, I keep it in the freezer, it's easy. And then I'm gonna take some uh, lemon zest, I'm gonna put some lemon zest in there. And this is gonna give us some freshness. I always try to add a little bit of uh, 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 acid when I can, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of lemon, uh, lemon brightens things, it wakes up the ingredients. And, and by the way, I know all of you know how to use the microplane grater number for the new comer in the channel. Remember, that's how you use it, right? So now you get it right there and you go, boom. You are going to be amazed what one lemon, the zest of a lemon does to a dish like this. You'll be amazed, I promise you, friends. Absolutely amazing what it does, okay? And then we're going to put it right in there, and that's it. Okay, and then we're going to put a little bit more olive oil, and we're going to create this paste... Then we're going to put on the inside of the, uh, of the, um, uh, the roulade. Roulade is a French way, a French word for it, for the embultini, the Italian version of it. You see? See right there, friends? This is the paste we're going to put on here. So, and, uh, and then we're going to put some prosciutto in there, some uh, salami di Genoa, 
just a little bit more oil. I want a little bit more uh, liquid. And then we have ourselves a beautiful paste. So I'm going to put this in a bowl, friends. Okay, and then I'm going to take out the beef again. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take it. And the nuts, I have the pine nuts over there, friends. Then I toast it. And I'm going to take the pine nuts. I don't want to grind them in there because I like to keep the texture of it. So I'm going to put my paste in here. See right there, friends? It's beautiful, isn't it? So instead of uh, having a mess with your roulade, your, uh, your, uh, the meat you're going to roll, I keep saying the French word of it, uh, it, it it's, you'll see it. It's cleaner. It's a cleaner pre preparation. And then we'll do, we add the nuts in there and we fold them in. Then the nuts are sticking to your roulade, you see? So you still get the texture of the nuts. And I roast them in a pan just a few minutes. You see, so, so they test better, otherwise they get starchy. All right, friends, I'm gonna clean all this up, finish it up, and then we'll make the roll out. I'll show you how to tie them correctly. I got a perfect trick for you, okay? So I'll be back in a minute, friends. Okay, friends, now that we got a paste, we got a beef, we got a prosciutto, and we got a salami di Genoa. Don't have to put those if you don't want to. Just a little uh, my thing. So look, guys. Um, I got my beef right there, and uh, I'm gonna put uh, uh, a little salt and pepper in there. There's a little salt and pepper, boom, boom, boom. And, um, right, and then I'm gonna put some of that paste. I'm gonna stay in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of it, and I'm gonna stay in the middle. And uh, yeah, stay, and I say that, right, and then I'm, I go right out of the middle. You notice, I tell you to do something and then I don't do it, or I mess it up. <laughs> I tell everybody, I mess it up so you guys don't do it. See, I, I, I really go out of my way to demonstrate things so that you don't make the mistake. Stay out of the edges, like right there, stay out of the edges, stay in the middle. All right? So far, not complicated, right? None of the stuff we do is complicated. Now, this is, uh, this is like uh, not Wednesday dinner, okay? It's Sunday dinner, <laughs> you start in the morning, eh? Take two slices of, uh, of salami right there. Don't have to put it in there, but uh, put it in there, right there, right? And to hold the whole thing together, put a nice piece of, uh, uh, a nice uh, um, a piece of ham right there. Prosciutto di Parma. This is a prosciutto di Parma, it's beautiful. All right, now we're gonna roll it. Let me take it, everything out of the way. I'm gonna roll it, it's very simple, eh? A child could do this. Roll it tight, 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 tight. Stay out of the edges, stay out of the edges, stay, stay out of the edges, I say that, and then I roll it right there. All right, so now, now we got a beautiful roll. You see, if you don't stay out of the edges, see what happened, it comes out like that. So put it like that so nobody sees it. All right, so now we're gonna tie it. Now, Mamma me, I see so many people that they tie, where did they learn how to tie? They put twine over there, twine over there, twine over there, twine over there, and they, Mamma me, it takes forever. I'll show you, very simple. One piece of twine, about three times the length of what you got. So we got one, one two, three. Okay, cut it, three times. Not complicated, right? Take the, the short piece, keep it about a time, a time and a half for what you got right here. See, this right there? Keep it in front right there, right? Take the other piece right there. Take it about a third, right? You're gonna do two knots right there, right? You're gonna go, you're gonna go. Did I keep it? Okay? Yeah, okay. One, two, it's very simple, right? Eh? Okay, and then tie it. It stays together. If you do one, two, and you go like this, it stays. And then you do a three to be, to be sure. But when you tie them, you do one, two, and it stays together. Okay, now what else do you do? You go over there, and you go about a third, another third right there. Right there, you're gonna put another loop. You don't have to cut it, look. You go in, you don't have to cut it. You go like this, okay? And you take it, and you loop it, boom. Look, look. Very simple what I did, right? It's not one of them complicated things, right? And now you go right there, and what do you got now? You flip it, and then you tuck everything in. It's okay if it doesn't stay in, it's not gonna come out. Tuck it in the best you can. Now I cut it a little short, you have to notice. <laughs> Again, I do the mistakes so you don't make them. Just, just give yourself a little more twine next time, okay? So then you don't suffer like I'm suffering right now. And right there, my friends, you got yourself a perfect package.
Not complicated. All right? So I'm going to do all of those right there. I'm going to get them all ready. And then we're going to saute them. We're going to put in the tomato sauce. I'll be back in a minute, friends. Okay, friends. Well, here they are. Actually, six. I got out of that two pound. And I want to show you sometimes, you know, I do two. And sometimes I do three. You know, one to three. Depends how long they are. You know, it depends how much I pound them. And uh, so we're going to put some salt and pepper in there. Now, I can certainly saute them in the, um, in the same pot as, uh, as I'm going to make the sauce and then, re and then uh, make the sauce. But I find it's easier if I saute them separately, especially for the, for the purpose of this video, it's a lot easier. If I'm at home, I'm probably not going to dirty a fry pan. I'll do it in a pot. <laughs> I just find it's easier if I do it in, uh, for the demonstration right there, friends. So I got, a, I got some olive oil going over there, and I'm going to sear them. Really beautiful golden brown on all sides. I want a nice and golden brown. I want to give him a nice uh, my yacht reaction here. Some nice uh, caramelization. Okay, we're going to do that on all turn. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to make the sauce. Nice tomato sauce. Now, if you have a tomato sauce already made, friends, use that tomato sauce. If you already got one that is already made in your freezer, then by all means, use that. You know, it'd be nothing, nothing wrong with this to use it if you have it. But otherwise, you're just gonna have to make it right now. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it right now. In the last minute. So pretty simple, eh? So I got my onion going over there, and I got two, uh, one, one big onion. You know, I use the big ones, and I'm gonna wait for it to get a little golden brown. Then very simple, nothing special here. We got we got some uh, tomato sauce, uh, some. Um, uh, a tomato right there. I got, I don't know where they are. One over there. I, I'll bring them over there, Jack. I got uh, two large cans of, uh, of tomatoes, uh, peeled tomato, Italian tomato, Laval tomato. So I use uh, those big cans. And then we're going to saute this on all sides. Going to get a beautiful golden brown. And then we're going to make the sauce at the same time. No different than when I make my regular sauce, eh? Onion nicely caramelized. Then we're gonna put some garlic. As soon as we smell the garlic, we're gonna put the tomato in there and we're gonna cook them. Now, you can cook them on the stove, but it requires more attention. You know what I like to do? I got it in the oven at 350, 360, 370, between 350 and 375. Put it in the oven for two and a half, three hours. Should be nice and tender. The meat should be put, ready to fall apart. I'm going to serve it with a, my uh, uh, polenta cake. You know, I make my famous polenta. For those of you that I made, you know what I'm talking about. It's amazing. If you have never made it, Jack is going to give you a link of it. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. And it's right here. See, look, I made it. It's already on a cookie sheet. I just made it this morning. It's, in, it's now going in. It was in the fridge for like four hours. I'm going to cut it in cakes, you know, with a cookie cutter. And then I'm going to reheat it when I'm ready to eat and pop it in the oven. With, uh, with the rest of it for uh, however long it takes to get it hot. So it's really fantastic. So, oh, you can have a soft polenta. Nothing wrong with that. The consistency of mashed potato. But if you want to make it a little more elegant, then you want to make it a potato cake. Okay? It makes it very elegant. You'll see. So it's not that big of a deal, and it makes it elegant. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with soft polenta. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, another thing that I wanted to tell you, you know, this... Uh, this stuffing than we did you know if you test it it's got to taste good right away you know with all the bread and the garlic it's not too too garlicky not too much basil not too much anything it's a perfect balance all right so look let's put the garlic in there and remember now how long do we cook the garlic for just until you smell it and the second you smell it which will be really quick because my pan is super hot if you smell it what do you do you put something wet on it. Here we go, tomatoes. They're wet. <laughs> They're wet. Now, it's a miracle I don't get any on my jacket. Well, we're not finished yet. <laughs> we're not finished yet. Usually, a little bit end up. You know, when I had the restaurant, I would always have a chef jacket behind the kitchen door. Okay, there was no way I'm going to come out in the kitchen, coming out in the dining room with a stain on my jacket. So I always had an extra jacket in there. 
You know, people were coming, I go, oh, why are you working? You say, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you, usually when you're working in the kitchen, you get some stain on your, on your jacket, unless you're really not working. But if you're really working, you're going to get some stain. All right, so we got the, uh, the, the, the tomatoes, we're going to put it on to, tomato puree. Okay, we're going to reduce the heat. We don't need to be so high anymore. Everything is nice. We're going to put a can of tomato puree. That's 28 ounces. So, actually, those can of tomato I was using, friends, was, uh, was uh, 30, 30 some ounces. They were a little bigger. I think it was 36 ounces. Two of them. That's, that was a lot of, lot, lot of tomato right there, right? And then the tomato puree was a 28 ounce can. We're going to put a little basil in there. Just take a leaf of basil right there and just tear them, tear them up like this. Don't worry about a thing, just tear them up. It'll be perfectly fine, just tear them up. Okay? Piece of cake. <laughs> let's put some salt and pepper in there, friends. Okay, let's measure carefully. And let's not forget to put a tablespoon and a half of fresh thyme. And what right there, my friends? You got a dish that is ready. Look, look, you see, see they say they're looking good. They're looking good. They're looking, it smells amazing. Doesn't it, Jack? Eh? It smells great, right? It's all the uh, all the garlic and all that. This is beautiful right there. Look at this, friends. It's gorgeous. All right? So this is very simple, eh? It's not a complicated dish. We're going to pop it in the oven. And we're not going to let it, we're not going to worry about it. I'm going to check it maybe every hour to make sure everything is nice. You, you don't want to cook it too high heat, otherwise you lose all that moisture in there. We don't want to do that. All right, so look, friends. We're going in. We're going in submerge. You see? Everything submerge. And here, my, my friend, right there. So you know what I'm gonna do? I don't have it right here, but this, this looks very nice. So I'm gonna deglaze this with a little bit of uh, red wine. I don't have it here. And I'm gonna pour it in here. So I'm gonna clean up my pen so I don't waste all that goodies right there. <laughs> all right, so I'll be back out of the oven when it's all beautiful and ready to go. Okay, friends, well, one thing is for sure, you gotta give yourself a good two and a half, three hours. Three and a half, if that's what it takes. Depends the cut of beef you're gonna have. You'll find out, you'll, you'll go and, and check with a fork to make sure they're okay, all right? At least two and a half hours. I don't think you're gonna do it less than that. Uh, three hours, I think, is about the right thing. So, we're gonna uh, take the top off, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna serve them with a polenta cake, you see? From, uh, from the whole cookie sheet, I get a cookie cutter. You know, at first you gotta put it, okay, so you cook them, not long, 15, 20 minutes, you let them cool. At room temperature, you put them in the fridge for five hours. And when you're ready for dinner, when you're ready for lunch, when you're ready for whatever it is, you cut them in the size you're going to want them. And then all you got to do after that is take them, you, you rewarm them on like that, and they're nice and soft. And that's the only way you get yourself, you put them on a warm plate, that's the only way you get yourself a nice serving of a polenta. I, I don't, and there's nothing wrong with having a spoon of polenta like a mashed potatoes, but if you want a little classy dinner, this is the way to do it, all right? Okay, so let's grab one. Uh, let's grab, a, here you go, let's grab one. Normally, you should be able to grab the twine uh, uh, from, uh, from the other side, and, uh, and you don't want to lose tr track of that, uh, of that twine. Let me just put this back over there. And then what you do, you'll cut, and then you'll keep that wine, and then you'll pull, you see, you'll, you'll, you'll pull, and then the whole thing comes out, okay? And if it doesn't come out a whole thing completely, that's because you didn't do it, you didn't pull correctly, all right? So if you pull it all out right there, you got to see, one, one cut is all you need, because you got one piece. It's not like you have 17 little pieces out there, you see? That's why I think it's very important you learn how to do it the right way, my friends. All right, so now let's take a tongue. Let me wash my, wipe my hand. Let's take a tongue and then we'll put them on a the plate. It's very simple and then we'll put a little sauce. You see right there, and this is cooked to perfection. And uh, we're gonna put the sauce and we'll get ourselves a, a, a sauce right there. 
<laughs> and you pour right there. You can put a, as much, of course, or as little of the sauce as you want. It's really up to you, my friend, how much sauce you want to put in. I like to put just a little bit so it goes, it goes on the uh, on the polenta a little bit, right? And at this point, you can put a little bit of chopped parsley. You can put a little chiffonade or basil, or, or just like I spray. I don't have the chiffonade or basil. I have it right there. Or you know what would be nice also is a little bit of chopped parsley on there, and I probably have some in there. I love a little chopped parsley also in here. Or like I said, chiffonade or basil. If you thought of doing it, of course I didn't but we'll have it right there and it's still gonna be perfect. So now, let me cut into it so you get the idea of what we have. It should cut really nice and easy, friends. Let me get a fork. It should cut nice and easy. You, should, you don't have to go like this, okay? It should be like really, really nice and easy. And you go right through it and you have yourself a beautiful washroom. Well, See, look at that, look at the inside, friends. It's gorgeous. Am I in your way right here, Jack, with the camera? You're good? You have a beautiful wash over right here. You see, so it's beautiful. It's tender. It's gonna be amazing. And, and you know, and I love, I love like a spoon right there. Or a, oh, it's gonna be hot, be careful. <laughs> um, you see, it's perfectly, I kept the whole thing together. You see, if I eat all this, I'm not gonna be able to talk. So I'm just gonna have a half of it. And, uh, and right there, boy, this is a beautiful watch. My grandmother would be very proud. And she was always very proud. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow, just missed you. Mm. Mm. My friend, it's worth it. Give yourself plenty of time, remember, okay? And, uh, and you don't need an expensive piece of beef, okay? The top round or bottom round, uh, it's perfect for this. That's why you have to let it cook a long time. Long and slow. Que va piano, va sano, que va sano, va lontano. Friends, I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it. You're gonna make it. I know you're gonna make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching, friends. Wow, this is delicious. This is a good, very good, Jack. I hope you're hungry, because let me tell you, this is great. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Wow, I'm hungry. I'm gonna have at least two for myself.